This review is brought to you by Charcoal Toothpaste. Hello, it's Aaron from AaronOnAutos.com and today I'm going to do a shaky cam interior review in th in th inside, 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 <laughs> sound like a three-year-old. Anyway, inside a 2020 uh, Ram 1500 Bighorn with a whole bunch of Mopar goodies. Yeah, it is a cool truck. So, uh, yeah, this truck has all kinds of cool stuff. It's got a roll bar with lights on it. It's got the, uh, it's got the bed kit that has the sliding drawers. I'll show you some of that, um, on video here. And, uh, uh, that platform over those drawers, you can put anything that will fit in the bed so any any the same amount of weight that would go in the bed can go on that so you can put your atv or whatever really really cool package uh so let's get started for the most part this is the bighorn package it does have a couple of add-ons um before we get going i'll just show you the monroni this is the window sticker for this truck without the mopar add-ons uh, anyway the uh, mopar stuff is normally added on after sale so um, it is not uh, part of the purchase in terms of your loan. Anyway, enough with the details. So let's get looking at uh, the interior here. So uh, you will have just probably seen a Ram 1500 in the Tradesman package. This is the Bighorn package, the most popular package for this truck, and there's good reason for it. So uh, you can see already uh, the handles get a little bit different. They're nicer and prettier. Uh, good kind of a brushed aluminum, almost a nickel look. And then down here you have the doors and windows. They are unchanged. Uh, with the exception of these mirrors do fold in. So you push that button, mirrors fold in, push it again, mirrors fold back out. They're pretty cool. Um, useful for car washes and stuff like that. Or when you're out here in the hinter, see I'm out in the hinterlands. I'm on top of the giant bluff here and uh, when you're, you know, scraping through trees and things get a little narrow, you can push that and suck those mirrors in, make it a little bit easier on you. Uh, and then this adjusts those said mirrors. It does not adjust the tiny little pony mirror. So over here, you have your vents and the uh, cooling system, which I forgot to turn off. Sorry. <laughs> Down here, you got your bacon and email. Right here you have your lights. So you can see I have them on auto. Uh, I was driving in the fog to get up here. So I had them right here and then pushed this fog lamp button to turn on the fog lamps. And then if you have the headlamps on and you want them to, to tone down, you do this right here. Um, otherwise, most of this is self-explanatory. Over here you have dimmers. So you can see the different, uh, two different lights, instruments and lights. And then down here, this is your electronic uh, parking brake. I like those a lot better than the manual ones you push in with your foot, uh, simply because they engage every time and you always know. This adjusts the pedals, so you can suck the pedals up and down um, in order to uh, you know, make them fit you. I will point out though, there is no dead pedal in this truck, and I find that disconcerting. When I'm off-roading, I really kind of want a place to put my foot, and I don't want to be stretching to do that. Um, it feels like an omission to me, but okay. Over here, you see this little hiding button? That's the add-on button for the Mopar lights that are on top of the rack. Um, I'll show you a picture of what that is right there. See that? Those are pretty cool. So that's how you turn them on and off. They also have covers, so when you're on the highway or whatever, you can cover them up. Um, now, looking at the steering wheel, over here on the left, uh, this is mostly the uh, driver information screens. So you see that screen up there changes when I touch that button. So that's what this is for. Um, that total mileage, by the way, I will be adding another 45 miles to that to get home from here. Uh, but that will pretty much be all the mileage I put on this truck. I haven't had it very long uh, and I, I don't get to keep it very long, which is kind of a bummer. But I'm trying to do back to back to back uh, Ram trucks uh, for a story. So it's, it's kind of uh, facilitating that. Anyway, um, you page through the menus here, you hit OK to choose what you want. Uh, there's a lot of good options. I'll show you some of those in a minute. Over here is your telematics. So this is how you hang up and pick up the phone. And then this is voice control. Voice control with Chrysler's Uconnect, which is what Ram uses, is very good. Um, you probably won't need it because the touch screen is just as good, but you know. And I pointed this out in the last truck in the, in the uh, tradesman package. 
the raised ram that's it's it matches what's on the tailgate back there really really cool i really like this it just looks neat and it looks very 3d when you're looking at it uh, so you see the multi-reflective surfaces and you can just tell by your eyes that it sticks out it's kind of neat over here is cruise control you see it's just standard cruise control there's no adaptive on this this is the um so you turn it on here and then you set reset etc down here's your gearing control. So you use this to shift gears and then you use this to hold a gear. So uh, most of the time you're gonna be using that is probably when you're towing and you're pulling a trailer, you crest the hill in say third gear, you hit this to hold third gear going back down that hill. Uh, assuming the RPMs can handle it, this will hold you there. So pretty smart system, uh, useful if you are a trailering person. So if you do a lot of trailering, you'll understand why that's good. Uh, nothing over here. Whoa, empty. They pack everything onto one dongle. Uh, since the lights are separate down over there, they didn't have to put them up here. So what they did was the washers. So this is the washer wipers. So you turn this, turns on the wi wipers. You push or pull it, push it like this, and it mists, right? So this little button. And then you have your signal turns up and down and back and forth for your bright lights. And then you can see all the washer settings uh, going or wiper settings going up and down. Uh, instrument cluster, a little too big to fit in one shot, so I'll have to I'll have to pan. Over here's your tachometer. Down there is your engine slash water heat. Up there is a compass, useful I guess. Over there is the outside temperature. You can see it's pretty cold today. Uh, really foggy. Fog's lifting. See, it's starting to go away, but it has been pretty foggy. Uh, over here is your speedometer, and you see the uh, Canuck miles per hour in the middle. And then down here is your fuel. So that's your fuel gauge, and then you can see the indicator of the fillers on the left. Over here, this is your driver information screen. This is your main menu. So as you page up and down through those using your buttons, you see what uh, that menu shows. And then over here, it's showing you what, what, uh, how much range you have left. And then right there tells you whether or not cruise control is active, right? So I turn it off, turn it on, right? So that little indicator just stays on when you have cruise control. And then in these menus, you have a handful of options. So right now we're looking at vehicle info. You can see lots of uh, like different uh, uh, temperatures for oil uh, differentials. There's your battery and so on. Then down here is your gearing. Um, so if you go into manual, which I may or may not be able to do, let me put it in a drive. And then if I put it in a first gear, like that, then you see that's what gear I'm in, and it tells you whether or not you can go up and down, etc. Down here is the odometer. I'm in four wheel drive right now. Actually have no reason for that because I am done uh, bouncing. So you feel that jerk that was pulling out of four wheel drive. That's, that's the uh, transfer case. Uh, over here, oil heat. Over here, battery. So the stuff that was showing up there is also showing down here. Pretty simple and straightforward, but very useful. Uh, information display and just overall useful instrument cluster. I really like the way it's laid out. Nicely done on that RAM. Forgot to mention on the steering wheel, since this is an upgrade package, back here, this is how you change the volume. There's a there's a toggle switch, goes up and down back here. On this side, same toggle switch. This one uh, changes stations and or skips songs, depending on how you're, whether you're streaming or playing off a radio or whatever. Now, here is the uh, gear shifter. So this is the gear select. You can see park, reverse, whatever. So you just turn it. They changed the feel of this. It has a more tactile feel to it. And it's very, very positive on those clicks. You can hear them. Hear that? So you, it's much better than it was before. You're much less likely to grab the wrong knob, you know, to twist this instead of that. Um, it's just feels different than these, even though they have a similar design. This has a very different feel. So uh, your chances of, of running this when you don't mean to are almost none. Right here are your controls. So you can see you can go into neutral with that. That's the neutral for the transfer case, I will point out. Uh, and then here's two-wheel drive, four-wheel low, four high, four auto. Four auto is kind of nice. Uh, you can just, especially like uh, bad weather driving uh, or when you're just not sure, uh, you push that and if uh, things get squirrely, it shifts into four-wheel drive as needed. It's nicely done. Over here, you can see the vents, and then you can see this storage spot up here. You can throw stuff in it. It's got a 12-volt plug. That's standard in all the Rams we found out with the Tradesman. Yeah. So, kind of just walking through the uh, walking through the trade uh, levels on this truck. The next one I'm going to have that you'll see after this will be a 
uh, I believe it's a limited model. I don't think it's a Laramie Longhorn. I think it's a limited model. So yeah, going right, right up to the top of the line after this. So right here, uh, looking at the, this is the infotainment, really well done. Ram did a good job upgrading this for this new model year. Uh, the new 2020s, they're, they're pretty much all new. And this is a big, big upgrade for them. Uh, lots of usefulness. It's a, just a, basically an evolution, a next iteration of Uconnect. Much brighter, better screen. Uh, and then you have that big 12-inch screen you, as an option. And this just really, this looks exactly like half of that screen, basically. And it's really well done. I really like the layout. I like the way it works. So uh, one thing I don't like is that there are no hard buttons, so like physical buttons you know, to go to like the main menu and stuff. But they did a really good job of creating this so that it's fairly straightforward. So your main stuff is pretty much always down here. And then you can just uh, bounce around and use those. If you wanna go to the main menu, you basically just hit apps. That's pretty much your menu. And then you have tons of things that you can use in there. Uh, if you add the Wi-Fi package, you can get the Wi-Fi connections that'll be in here, all that kind of stuff. Really, really nice. Down here, the hard controls. Here's the volume, and then you push that to turn this off. So if you push that, everything turns off. You turn it back on like that. It may or may not keep muting. Nope. That's the mute button. You just saw me hit it. Here's the Duke's lights. Here is the screen. So you can just turn the screen off, but everything stays on. So now stuff is still running. And then you can either hit this button to turn it back on or just do that. Um, right here is your tuner and so forth. You can see what it does. Down here... Uh, here's the bun warmers, steering wheel warmer, uh, steering wheel warmer, steering wheel warmer, other bun warmers. Down here's the climate controls, pretty straightforward. Most of the time you just push auto, you get a setting, you're done. Uh, but here's your uh, defrost, important to know that. Um, I will say when you remote start, the rear defrost comes on automatically and you can toggle the front defrost on and off in settings up here. Just FYI. Down here, I believe you can also toggle the other one. I haven't checked. You can also toggle seat heating, uh, so you know. So down here, you have a whole bunch of toggles. Here is traction control. This is tow mode right here. You can turn off the parking radars individually for the rear or the front. Uh, kind of nice to know. If you're off-roading, I tend to turn off the front ones because I can see the front of the truck very clearly. I don't need those going off just because I'm getting close to something. But I leave these on because out the back, I don't quite have as much visibility, obviously. Um, the backup camera does do a good job, right? But I still can't see those corners and I can only just see them in those side mirrors. So just for extra protection, I've been leaving this on. You don't have to. That's just what I've been doing because uh, I don't want to bang up the truck. So looking down here past my coffee mug, which is all important, you see four USB ports and an aux port. So there's two USB-Cs, two regular USBs, and an aux port. These are all data as far as I know, so useful. Down here, this is your CD player, and then you can see how you pop it out, and it just tells you how to put it in. And this lights up when there is a disc in there, so you know that there is a disc. Now we get into the cool stuff. Ram's done this for a little while. So you can see right here, this is where you just stick your phone. It just sits in there. You can put a whole tablet all the way across. Wireless charging on this side, really, or wireless charging on this side. Really useful though, you can put a couple of phones in there. Uh, you can put your phone sideways in there, whatever you wanna do. And then you saw me slide this back. That down there is a 110 outlet. And then, or 115, eh, same difference, household outlet. And then you can see this big cubby. So if I take my drink, my coffee mug out of there, Oh, excuse me. This slides all the way back to give you this giant storage spot. If you don't need that storage spot, you slide this all the way forward. Now you have drink holders and a smaller storage spot right here, which is highly useful. I really like this setup. And then the big, the big armrest right here, right? That opens and there's a top portion where you can throw some things. And then you can see that there's a cord through right here. So you can run a cord through to plug it in and leave something right here. Or you can plug it in back here right lots of cool stuff there and then when you open that look on the back of it there's these cool engineering diagrams for figuring angles and all kinds of stuff pretty cool now part of the mopar package this is a safe a safe box how cool is that so let me bust out the key for this and i'll show you how this works so you got valuables you park in the truck somewhere you just open this up boom Drop your 
valuable crap in there close it lock it back up done how cool is that that's pretty sweet uh if this was not here this would have file holders and you could hang files you could you, know, you or you'd have all this for storage big deep thing really really neat though it's a interesting thought that i i wouldn't have thought of with a with a truck honest now uh, let's look at glove boxes just look at the dash look how cool they did it it's just a nice broken up you know it's not flat but it's it's not uh, like all angular and european and weird it's just a clunk clunk you know kind of just feels really good here's a proper glove box for the english folks and then down here is your uh american glove box where you store all your stuff you see the rubber floor mats uh you can see the this is also some of this is also part of the mopar package so it's upgraded huge back seat down under there you do have the ram boxes uh so those little uh, saddlebag boxes under both sides and the seats they fold up for storage and you see how easy it is to get to those latches parents take note easy to get to those latch spots for your uh, car seats really nicely done i really like uh just the whole overall package it's just very ergonomic very nicely done it's a good pickup truck so good job ram you did a good good work and i think i'm gonna sign off that's all i got so it's been aaron aaron on autos.com talk to you again soon subscribe